this, um, so this, we've already done inverse trig functions, right? So if I, let's just say, um, I was going to do this one. What, what would I do? What do they want me to do? What would you do with that? That's arc cosine, right? And what, what, if I were to plug that in my calculator, don't. But if I were going to plug that, because it tells you not to use your calculator, but if I were going to plug that in the calculator, what information is the calculator giving me? What am I finding when I do arc cosine or arc sine? The degree. You're finding the, de you're finding the degree or the angle, right? You're finding the angle measure. So we want to do it in radians, but exact values and all the calculator gives you. Because if you do calculator, if you do use your calculator, it's going to give you awful decimals. And in radians, we would rather have pi over a number, right? So in order to get the exact values, we have to use our unit circle. But we're looking for angle measures. So let, we're going to start with, I'm going to skip the ones that are zeros and ones because those are quadrantal, and I'm just going to go to some of their actual angle measures. So let's go to number four. So if I'm looking for arc sine of a half, I'm looking for the angle in radians where sine is a half. So obviously you could use your unit circle and you could just look around the unit circle and go, okay, well sine is a half in these places. But let's talk through it in terms of the fact that sine is positive. That narrows it down to which two quadrants? The top two, the top two quadrants, right? Sine is, is positive in quadrant one and two. There are two solutions to this. Sine is a half in quadrant one somewhere and in quadrant two. If you wanted to left hand trick this, sine is the y value. That means I need one finger on bottom. So I go one finger, fold this finger in, and that tells me what angle I'm at, which would be 30. pi, which is pi over six. So if it's pi over 6 in quadrant 1, what is it in quadrant 2? Five, five, 5 pi over 6. So this is pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So there are two solutions to this. All right, so we're looking for the angle. Anytime you do arc something, you're looking for the angle. Okay, so, if, so the one right below it is negative 1 half. So... If the one above it is positive one half, and those are the pi sixes, I just need the pi sixes that are in quadrant three and four. So what's the pi sixes in quadrant three? Seven pi Yep. And the one that's in quadrant four? Eleven pi Yep. All right, y'all good? Those are quadrantals. We'll get there in a second. Okay, so let's jump up to number 17 real quick. I'm going to just kind of jump around. I'm not going to do all these. This is just to give you an idea, and then I'm going to give you something else to do. Um, so number 17. This is cosine of square root 3 over 2. So cosine is x, which means I need three fingers on top. One, two, three. Hold this one in. Oh, I'm at the pi sixes again. The cosine is positive in 1 and 4. four. So I need the, obviously, pi over 6, because that's in quadrant 1, and it's positive. And what's the pi 6 that's in quadrant 4? Yeah. Well, negative square root 3 over 2 is right below it, which is just the other two pi 6s, right? Because I did 1 and 4, so I just need 2 and 3. So that's 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. Y'all okay? Okay, so now let's talk about some of the quadrantal ones. So if it's a 0 and a 1, that means that it's on the axis. So on these, if they're quadrantal, sometimes there's only one answer, sometimes there's two. So it just depends on which one they're asking for. Okay, so this is sine 0. So sine is y. So where on the circle is the y value 0? So, so in radians, what would that be? You're right, yes, in radians. So, yeah, if they didn't give us an interval, so it's either it's pi and 2 pi, or it could be 0 and pi, depending on which one. They, if we did it like this, um, 0 to 2 pi with the parentheses, you would say 0 and pi. If they did it like this, 0 to 2 pi with a bracket, then you would say pi and 2 pi. Yeah? You'll get the difference? Okay. They didn't give us an interval, so we'll just say whatever. We'll just say pi and 2 pi. All right, uh, what about what about tangent? Where is right here on uh, number 20? Where is tangent 1? So it's y over x. 
It's at the what? It's at the 45. The pi over 4. Because if y over x has to equal 1, that means y and x have to be the same thing, right? Or it's equal 1. The only place that they're the same thing is at the pi, at the pi 4, so the 45. So tangent's positive in what two quadrants? Okay, so it's pi over 4, quadrant 1. And in quadrant 3, that would be? 5 pi over 4. 5 pi over 4. Making sense, sort of? Tangent is pi over 3. At, tangent is square root of 3 at pi over 3. Because that just makes sense. It's true. At pi over 3, square root of 3. So th I know this is pi over 3. But that also means if it's, it's positive square root 3, so it's also the pi over 3 that's in quadrant 3, which is? 4 pi over 4. I don't know why on this page they didn't rationalize. They just didn't. But this is just square root 2 over 2. 1 over the square root of 2 is square root 2 over 2. They should have rationalized it, but they didn't. So where is sine square root of 2 over 2? Which is what in radians? Pi over 4. Pi over 4. And then the other quadrant? 3 pi over 4. All right, y'all pretty good? Make sense? Okay, so now with that said, except it's all on one page. Um, so let's look at number one. We're evaluating sine 60. So what is sine at 60? I'm going to left hand trick this. 60, 30, 45, 60. Sine is y. So it's square root 3 over 2. So I look on here under all the answer things to find square root of 3 over 2. And it's right here. So I, I put number 2 because this is the second oh. problem I'm doing. So the answer to number 1 is square root of 3 over 2. So then I have to go find my answer, where somewhere where it says answer, and it's right here. And so I put 2, because it's the second problem I'm working. Yeah? Okay. So now I'm evaluating cosine of 180. What is cosine of 180? Negative 180. All right, so now I have to find negative 1 is one of my answers. And it could be on the back. And it is. It's right here. So that's what I put 3. And then you're going to evaluate sine of 225. Okay. And you just keep going until you get all the way back to where you started. Now, if you get all the way, if you get to one that you've already done and you haven't finished it, then you messed up. Okay? Okay, go. If you need help, ask. If there's a place where there's multiple answers, only one of the answers is on here. So. Are we about to do that? That was not good. Everything I say is important. 